This YouTube is paired with a blog that fills this out in more detail. But the question is, how do you properly track and act on your to-dos? Now, there are three models that a CRM is going to use for this. The first is a passive model. And a passive model, basically, you're going to be working off of a filter. And so let's see how Autotask would handle that. And that is not the right button. So what we're going to do is here. And um, we're going to clear the values. And then we're going to look at all of our open to-dos. Now, what we want to do here is we want to choose our to-dos. And this is my test user and non-complete to-dos. And so this is all of the non-complete to-dos for me. Obviously, this goes way back um, because this is a test tenant. That said, um, this is showing us everything that we would want to be working. The problem with the passive approach is that it can have overwhelming amount of data if you're not properly filtering this out. That said, in this passive model, it's actually very common. It's simply a to-do list. And in an organization, a sales organization, that um, to-dos or activities are the main driver in their CRM, generally people are just going to be checking off things to do, and the CRM is going to be feeding them work. There's not too much automation in the CRM for Autotests, so it's not really great at feeding you work. But more importantly, Autotests is a better way of doing this. The second model is the notification or NAG model. In the notification model, the CRM will, will practically reach out to you and say, hey, look, you got these to-dos coming up. I'm not a fan of that model. What it really does is it trains you or your team to ignore emails and notifications, right? So if you wake up every morning and you have 14 reminders to do things, you're just not going to tackle them all every single day. It's just not how life works. And so you're going to naturally start ignoring certain emails and, and reading the others. And you're just training yourself to not do anything with that data. Also, the problem with that data is it's either going to get worse and worse if you don't complete all the to-dos, or you're going to start missing to-dos that, that are now overdue. but not showing up in the new reports because they're not upcoming. And so just not a, new, a big fan of that model. Autotest has um, a lot of emphasis on the third model, which I call the highlights model. And the highlights model, the CRM is just going to drive you toward the behavior that works best for your organization. And here with dashboards, it's going to drive you toward doing to-dos that are upcoming, not ones that are far off in the future. And I'm going to show you how you create a dashboard widget to make that happen. And again, the highlights model works well in, in Autotest because Autotest has a really, really powerful dashboard widget feature. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a widget that just has upcoming to-dos. This is going to include past due to-dos. And so what I did here was I created a new tab, and then I chose a grid. And that's what this is. And I made it fill the screen. Um, you can choose how you want that. And I'm going to walk you through the settings here. I just call that my upcoming to do is maybe you can call it my late and upcoming, right? And so this is just kind of a highlight field. It's shown everywhere. And um, you'll see in the output right here that it's just bolded. That's the big thing. The additional columns are all these other columns are going to go across your grid. Unfortunately, and I'm not sure of the thinking on this. I think this was just an oversight. But they don't actually have an opportunity as one of the fields you can select. That's a real buzz kill. That'd be very nice in this grid, um, but it's not currently available. Hopefully, they resolve that pretty soon. You can see it pretty easily when you click on that item, uh, but still, it'd be nice if I could sort by the opportunity. Anyways, you're going to want to include account, contact, start, and end date in the description. That's the notes that you put into it. Now, the next key thing to worry about is the filters. How do we make sure we only see the to-dos that are needed by me? So the key ones here are we're going to choose to do or note. And again, these are going to be um, available because we chose the entity to do's and notes up here. I'm going to go in more detail in the blog on this. But uh, just make sure when you're choosing the widget, you're choosing to do's and notes. And then we're going to say to do or note equal to non-complete to do's because we don't care about executed or completed to do's because we've done them. They're two dones. Now, the assigned resource. Um, so obviously, for most of your CRM users, you just want to see yours. If you're a manager, you may want to see all of them in a different widget. For example, you may have a widget that says, my, you know, my sales team's overdue to-dos. But this is an actionable to-do, I mean, a widget. So we're going to say, is the logged in user, which is you. And then the start date, this is key. We're going to use a dynamic range. Boom. Once you do that, you are good to go.